everyone, welcome back to She Sews Happiness. I'm Mary Ellen and this is my channel where I share all things stitching related with you. So I have already filmed a vlog today. I filmed um, a short vlog about the Sew Over It Jessie Kotigan, which should be live on my channel already. Um, and if you want to check that out, you can do so. Um, I made several of those <laughs> over the last couple of weeks. So I figured it kind of deserved a little video all of its own, but I have got up to a few other bits and pieces as well. And I just thought I'd share those with you while I'm here. <laughs> and you know, it is a few hours later from when I filmed that and it's getting dark outside. It's pretty cozy and I'm still very non-committal as to what I want to do next. So I'll share with you what I've been up to and a few plans and um, we'll see where we go from there. So in addition to my three codigans that I've been making in the last couple of weeks since I've been gone, I have also been doing some stitching, um, both making dress, accessories, and some cross stitch as well. So whether you're here for the sewing or the cross stitch, um, because I do update on both quite, reg quite regularly, um, I can show you what I've been up to. So yeah, when I was feeling a bit poorly, I just curled up on the sofa with my cross stitch projects as they are completely effortless and really mindful and almost therapeutic. And what I have managed to get done this month is I have finished my cotton and twine cross stitch subscription box for October. And I know it's really difficult to see with all of the lights and the shadows and stuff in there. Um, I'll maybe pop a little picture in instead. But I absolutely love these boxes. They've started to get really festive now, so they're all kind of Christmassy. And when you've got the cold nights and the warm fire, it's actually really nice to sit and stitch something Christmas, stitch something Christmas related. Um, so I think the next month's box is also a Christmas design. So I'm sure I'll get through that in no time at all. I've also ordered a whole host of um, DMC embroidery threads and Eda fabric. And um, I've recently managed to get a hold of some Margaret Sherry cross stitch books that are no longer in print. Um, well, magazine books, booklets, I suppose is the word for them. And there's some gorgeous little designs in there. Some which would be lovely for a nursery, some which are really cute for Christmas. And I know realistically there's only so much I'll get done for this Christmas, but it doesn't mean I can't put them away for Christmases to come. So lots of little projects that I'm keen to work on. But this, I mean, I think this is the fastest I've ever stitched up one of my cotton and twine cross stitch subscription boxes. Um, I think I did this in like four or five days. So that tells you how incapable I was of doing anything else um, while I was a bit under the weather. So when I finished that, then I discovered when we were pulling everything out of the back room to get the log burner put in and redecorate and things like this, I discovered one of my old make box um, boxes. So I had not finished this. I started this and I finally got it stitched. So this was one of last year's designs. It was an Alice in Wonderland themed cross stitch. And I love Alice in Wonderland, so I couldn't resist. I just wish I had stitched it up much, much sooner. It's beautiful. It'll go up in the craft room on one of the walls somewhere. Um, I just, the only thing I hate about it is this um, plastic wooden designed um, frame. I much prefer a proper wooden frame with its rigidity than these kind of like plastic wonky things. But I suppose once it's on the wall, it won't bother me as much. But like every time I touch it, it's almost like it's gonna pop out and it's really, really off-putting. So yeah, I, I did a lot of <laughs> stitching um, and not as much dressmaking as what would be usual for me apart from my codigans. You can see there, I have actually made another Colette Patterns Moneta dress. I have to say this has been the pattern that has got me through my entire pregnancy. And I'd made a few plain versions of it recently. So I had a gray, I had like an autumnally rust color and I had the red and I thought, well, we'll mix it up. <laughs> There's a black and white. So it's not crazy print pattern or anything, but I just thought rather than all the plain things, I'll make up another version. So I'll pop some photos in later because I'm planning to wear it out 
later this evening. Um, the fabric was an absolute bargain. I think it was less than 10 pounds a meter. I need it just over two meters um, to make this dress. And I, yeah, it was from Fleurior and unreal, absolutely unreal. Beautiful fabric. It, it really holds its stretch. Um, I think it's a viscose jersey where I thought you know that. But yeah, I love houndstooth and I have quite a few houndstooth pieces in my wardrobe. It's just, they're all very fitted and, um, you know, made of rigid fabrics that don't move. And I just wanted something in that classic houndstooth that I could wear for now. Um, but again, as I always say, I'll wear that for years to come as well. You know, once, once my body shrinks back to where it was. And the other thing I've made, and I really love this, this is something a wee bit different, is um, a beret. So this is a beret made in a black wool, which incidentally is left over from the princess coat that I made last winter. The wool, I believe, was from um, Fabric Godmother, and there was just a little bit left in my little scrap pack. And as I was looking through all the, the different wools that I had, and I just wanted a plain beret to start with. It's the Merlena beret pattern from Tara Dayton Atelier. Tara is a style queen. I just absolutely adore everything she makes, everything she wears everything she is, there's just something about her. And um, when she releases her patterns, I just can't resist. Um, I love a good accessory. And she also has a knitted beret pattern, which I love as well. It's called the tassel beret. Um, and I've knitted a couple of those last winter and they've been brought out again now for autumn winter. But I thought I'd give this a go. Um, so it, it's absolutely gorgeous, I love it. I love the fact that it's got structure. It is also lined um, and I've just used, I think this was a rose and tubble rose print um, cotton that I had. I previously made a charm pattern scout dress, I think it was from this. And you know, when you buy a beret, it's very seldom lined <laughs> and this just makes it feel more vintage. Um, we've got the little stock on there as well which I thought would be really difficult to sew, but Tara actually has um, a video, a sew along, that you can watch on her YouTube channel. And if you haven't watched her YouTube channel, you really ought to go over there. It's really inspiring, some fabulous ideas. Um, and I liked her last video in particular, which was all about um, knitmas and giftmas, you know, coming up to the Christmas season. And I think this would be a beautiful gift. Um, for friends as well and while I've made mine in a plain black wool there's no limit as to what you could do in terms of even embellishments and things like that as well. Tara made a beautiful one for Halloween where she had stitched cobweb design on it but I mean even just sewing on some little pearls or even just a little motif. I think you could do pretty much anything with that. Nice if you like a wee bit of hand stitching or if you have a fancy embroidery machine, you could go full out. But I think even just some like some diamantes or pearls would really elevate this as well. But for me, I just wanted a plain black beret in my collection. Hello. Oreo just wants to say hello. So yeah, that's another thing that I made and I will be making more of these. I will potentially go and buy some really beautiful fabrics because you don't need an awful lot just about half a meter of your lining half a meter of your wool and you've got that beautiful accessory so little one wanted to come and uh, participate in my video so yeah the Marlena beret was really enjoyable and I cannot wait to make a few more of those um I've actually been on to Missy Mop fabrics because um Nikki has gorgeous vintage fabrics on there and I thought I'd pick out a couple it's just been really hard to pick out a couple and um, but yeah I'm going to make some more of those and I might even make some for friends as well my dog beds have also been completed so I'll pull a picture in I did get those finished and the little tutorial is there on my youtube that will show you how to make them if you want to make one of your own you love it don't you yeah you love it so, what are my 
plans next then? I think that's the question. Are you going to go back down? Are you? You don't know what you want to do, do you? Um, yeah, so my plans next are what's failing me. I don't want to make any more stretch jersey garments, but obviously I can't make much else for myself at the moment until I, you know, have the baby and start to get back to my regular size. Can I put you back down? Thank you. Um, so I think one of the next things I will be making is, oh, hello. I think he's changed his mind. I think he's going to sit here just for a little while um, and explore and see what I am up to. Aren't you? So let's see. Let's talk about our next fabric. So this is the fabric that I have been gifted by Minerva as part of the Brand Ambassador Programme. And I think this is what I'm going to use to make a Thread Theory Fairfield button-up shirt for Simon. So this is a cotton flannel fabric. Really, really super soft, really cosy, really warm. It's a pattern I've made before. I know that it fits. I know that it fits well. And if I can talk myself into just cutting it out, then I know that I'll sew it up quite easily. Oh, such a lovable little thing. Aren't you? So yes, that's one thing that is definitely going to get made as soon as I can get myself set to cut it out. Um, another thing I have here is some beautiful muslin fabric. I'm watching you. So this is obviously to make baby things with and really functional um, as well. You want to check it out? Doesn't meet with your approval. Yeah, so super, super soft. It is it's super soft and it's basically just going to make some muslin squares because everywhere I go, I find muslin squares and they just don't feel as soft or as beautiful as I'd like. And you get really fussy whenever you're um, a sewist and you're used to particular qualities of fabrics. So I got this from Once Upon a Fabric. And is the wee print absolutely adorable? And I have enough here to make four muslin squares. So that's a nice, easy project when I can be bothered changing my overlocker threads from black to white. Do you like it up here on the table? It's a novelty, isn't it? And then another fabric that I've treated myself to this week is a Cloud9 quilting cotton from um, the Christmas collection, which I purchased from Jenny Stitches Fabrics. So this is just a classic red poinsettia on black, and I just absolutely love this. And I'm hoping, because baby is due within the next four weeks, that by Christmas I can make something that isn't just stretchy, and this will make a beautiful Christmas dress. Um, and even if it doesn't, if I don't use it this year, if, you know, I just don't feel like, I'm ready to wear um, rigid clothing again, fitted clothing. I will sew it up next year, so it's no big deal. And I don't know what I'm going to do with this, but what do you see? The really cute um, Lucy Mabel Atwell fabric that arrived today from Susie Sharp Vintage Fabrics. Absolutely love this. Every time Susie puts these up on her online markets, I just have to say yes. Um, I mean, look how gorgeously, adorably vintage and cute this is. So I don't have a lot, but I do have enough to make like a really cute cushion or some pretty accessories or even a little bag or something like that. But yeah, I just couldn't resist that. I seem to be getting into the festive spirit, which usually doesn't happen to me until like the week before December, but Maybe it's sewing, maybe it's the sewing that inspires me more than the Christmas itself because I always like to kind of work to theme. Um, even in work, that's kind of how I like to work as well. So yeah, that's kind of where I've been, what I've been doing. It's what I'm planning to do over the next few days. And I have one week until my maternity kicks in and I'll be off work. And I hope I'm still in a position to enjoy making 
things and I hope all my new embroidery stuff arrives soon so that I can start stitching again but that's me that's where I am hopefully you're all having a great weekend and enjoying yourself whatever you're up to I think I'm getting the hint that it might be time for an evening stroll through the park with a torch because it's very dark isn't it <laughs> And uh, yeah, we're going to get settled down for the night. So take care wherever you are. Please do like the video if you've got this far and um, subscribe to my channel if you haven't done that already. And I hope to be back chatting with you all soon. Take care of yourself. Bye bye.